uh, in the previous video we have covered about uh, string and string function in this video we are going to uh, learn about more string functions such as the length function we discussed about in the previous video okay so uh, the string functions are the function which will be implemented on string as the name suggests so the first function is the length function i have discussed it in the last video but still i will discuss it in this video also so i'll uh, go ahead and uh, create a function main in which i'll define a string uh, of value a is equals to hello uh, okay mm, i'll not leave space and value b is equals to this is a coder and i'll define another um, value c and another string with a value and my age is and i'll define another value d and uh, it is an integer which is with the value of 90 okay so i have three strings and a, a integer so uh, firstly i am going to discuss the length function okay so uh, what about what if i have to uh, get the length of the uh, the value of the string b or the string a okay so i'll just go ahead and write the print statement okay so the value uh, the length of a is and i have discussed about the uh, string uh, template in the previous video so i i'm going to use that here okay and uh, the length of a is a dot length okay so the length function is used here as a dot length so whatever i have to uh, see the length of b whatever i have to see the length of c so just i am going to uh, copy this and paste and instead of b i'll do c so uh, when i run this program i should find the length of a b and c as the output okay so this is the use of the length function so as in the output we can see the length of a is 5 the length of a is 15 okay so i here did not change the values okay so length of a is 5 the length of b is 15 and the length of c is 13 we can verify from here also but uh, yeah I guess you are you have now a clarity about the length function the second function we are going to talk about is the get index function so get index function returns the character at the specific index within the bracket now uh, I have already told about you the index so in this hello string I will just mention h e l l o so uh, the h here has an index 0 the e has an index 1 the l has an index 2 and another l has an has an index 3 and the o has an index 4 okay so what the get index function does it returns the character at a specific at a specific index specified within the bracket so uh, i'll just mention a print function and i have to get what is the uh, character at uh, index 4 of b string so the character the character at index 4 of b is what i'll do is i'll just go b uh, okay so i'll first use string template and the uh, so the function is get in bracket index so i'll use the string template and i'll just mention the string that is b and the function that is get index okay and then the index so i have to uh, find the index at 4 okay so when i run this program 
what is the expected output so at 4 it has a space okay so it gives a space uh, so i'll just go ahead and change it to 5 and when i run this program we can see that uh, the output is the character at index 4 of b is index 5 of b is uh, i so yeah it is pretty clear from here that uh, the index at index 4 of string b is i so uh, here it is underlined by a yellow line so what i'll do is i'll go here and hit alt plus enter and it suggests that replace get call with indexing operator so what is an indexing operator so i'll just show you that okay so instead of doing this what i can do is i can just uh, mention b and that and then in the bracket i'll uh, square bracket i'll mention 5 okay so when i run this program i'll get the same output so instead of using get function or a bigger code i'll just do is what is what uh, b square bracket and the index okay it gives us the same result so i guess uh, the get index function is also pretty clear now what about the subsequence so as the name suggests it provides a sequence which is a part of the main stream okay so the the function goes like subsequence start index and end index so between start index and end index it prints all the uh, the string okay so it returns the substring between the start index and the end index but excluding the index and end index it is a main point one of the main point okay so it excludes the end index so uh, what if i uh, i go and uh, say uh, put the uh, print the substring from 1 to 3 of a so i have to mention 1 to 4 okay because it excludes the end index so i'll just go ahead and print for the uh, better understanding so print ln uh, the substring is uh, I'll uh, go with the string template and uh, for a I have to mention and the function is subsequence and uh, the start index is uh, 1 and the end index is 4 okay so what happens when I run this program what will be the output so when I run this program, it gives E L L, but at the fourth index there is O. So why is O is not, why O is not printed? Because it excludes the uh, excludes the character at the index last index mentioned here. Okay. So keeping that in mind, uh, just uh, predict the result uh, after pausing the video of the substring. Uh, uh, of b uh, 2 to 7 okay so what will be the substring of b dot subsequence uh, 2 comma 7 just pause the video and uh, think about it and write it on a paper or something okay and then now you can play the video and check so it is is space is now we will go ahead and check so uh, this so the second is here second uh, index is here okay third index is here and fourth fifth sixth seventh so seventh is a space so uh, it is not clearly visible here but the space is not printed here okay it stopped at the uh, s okay i'll just go ahead and make that nine so it would be more clear okay so not nine i'll make that eleven so uh, we can see that at the 11th index the letter the character o is there but in the output we cannot see o because the uh, last index is not printed there so i hope the subsequence uh, function is also clear to you okay so we have now till now covered the three uh, functions which are mostly usable now uh, we will be we will be moving to some less usable function okay so there is a compare to function so the compare to function compares uh, the object with the specified object of order 
okay so it just compare two strings it returns zero if the object is equal it returns a negative number if it is less than the other okay so uh, like what will be the uh, uh, i have to compare the okay what will be what will it be comparing it will be comparing the length of the two strings so uh, what i'll do is i'll just print ln and uh, print a dot compared to b okay so i am comparing here a to b so uh, like it is the specified other object is b here the specified other object is b and the object our main object is uh, a okay so uh, if it is less than the other it gives a negative number and if it is greater than the other it gives a positive number so you can guess the output here and uh, while i run the program so uh, when a is compared to b it provides a negative number that means that a is lesser than or smaller than b okay it is pretty clear from here that b is a, a larger string so i'll just go ahead and compare uh, also compare uh, b from uh, c okay so you can guess the output here as uh, b is a larger string so it gives a positive uh, okay and what i'll do is i'll just create for uh, the sake of just com comparing the function uh, a variable a value f and uh, just change some characters in it and uh, okay and now i'll do is what i'll do is i'll just compare uh, c compare to f and now i'll run the program and the expected output is zero because the two strings are of equal length okay but it gives a, a positive number why so because it it just not uh, compares the length okay it compares the object specified within the uh, string so the object the object f is uh, greater than the object c okay so uh, if i have the same string here then it will be zero but if i have uh, the purpose of me stating that was just that uh, if i have the same string then only it will be zero if i don't have the same string then the output could be z uh, positive or negative we cannot define that as per as of now okay so thank you for watching this video in the next video we will be covering more string temp string functions okay